Thanks for tuning in. It's been nearly 55 years since two big passenger planes collided over the Grand Canyon, killing 128 people. The TWA passengers are buried in this mass grave near campus. One Northern Arizona University student has chosen the topic of the collision for his thesis. On June 30th, 1956, the dramatic scenery of Grand Canyon proved fatal when two airliners collided near the confluence of the Colorado and Little Colorado Rivers in Grand Canyon National Park. Earlier this year, Benjamin Carver shared highlights from his thesis as part of the Grand Canyon Association's lecture series. We can pretty much guess that these aircraft were sort of weaving in and out of some large thunderheads that had developed over the Grand Canyon, trying to get a good view of the canyon for their passengers, which was sort of standard practice at the time. We do know that basically the United plane came from behind the TWA aircraft and collided with that aircraft and basically sent both airplanes sort of spiraling into the canyon. This tragic accident was the catalyst for creation of the Federal Aviation Administration, moving airwaves modernization higher on lawmakers' priority lists. In 1958, two years after the crash, appropriations had increased to $125 million. So there's this massive effort to modernize the airways that happened after the 1956 Grand Canyon disaster. Along with aviation modernization, Carver's thesis examined the process of cleaning up the remote crash sites. He also looked closely at decisions made on behalf of the victims. There were separate burials of the two different planes at the South Rim and in Flagstaff. And nobody that I had really ever seen had really looked at those memorials or how, how those were created. And that's something that historians are more and more looking at, uh, the cultural aspect of what it meant, what kind of words were put on these, what kind of ceremonies did they have, who was involved in them. In the nearly 55 years since the crash, many people have visited the mass graves. There has also been a significant increase in tourist traffic to the crash sites, even though they are difficult to access and most of the aircraft debris has been removed. By applying for the National Historic Landmark nomination, the Grand Canyon National Park could develop a new management plan for these historically significant areas. Certainly by adding that extra layer of protection, um, the status of the sites as a National Historic Landmark, I think would really hopefully provide additional protection and really educate visitors as well about the historic nature of these sites and their value. And hopefully people will realize that, you know, they shouldn't be looting these areas. The nomination process for the crash sites of the TWA and United Aircrafts is underway, and it will likely be another year or so before a decision is made on its formal historic status. Ben Carver worked on the National Historic Landmark nomination while doing an internship at the Grand Canyon National Park. He's continuing work on his Ph.D. at Northern Arizona University.